This video is a very brief introduction to the idea of low temperature matrix studies. And the idea of a matrix or matrix isolation is to freeze molecules at very, very low temperature in relatively dilute conditions in an inert matrix so that collisional energy dissipation is basically gone. This has a few interesting effects and allows us to study things that are commonly not happening for example, at room temperature and solution where many, many collisions are happening at, in a given time period. The technique of matrix isolation involves freezing a dilute sample, and it's important that the sample be dilute so that the molecules of interest are relatively far apart from one another at very low temperatures, and, and we're talking tens of kelvins. I mean, we're talking liquid nitrogen temperatures and below here in a matrix that is inert. So the blue molecules you see here on this zoomed in view are inert molecules that don't interact in a profound way with our molecules of interest. And what we can do with matrix isolation is a number of things that are difficult or impossible at room temperature and solution. We can study unstable molecules. For example, these diradicals you see right here come from the McMahon Research Group website at, at Wisconsin. These would be very much impossible or, or very difficult to study under room temperature solution conditions. And what we can do is turn off collisional energy dissipation. And this has two important effects from the photochemical perspective, from the perspective of excited state dynamics. The first is that non-radiative decay goes way down. Not only are we eliminating collisions between our molecules of interest and the solvent, but we're also ensuring that all of the molecules, the vast, vast, vast majority, are in the ground vibrational state. So occupation of higher vibrational levels cannot happen at these temperatures of, you know, for example, 10K and below. This tends to have the effect of increasing the observation of emission of photons, and while this can be important for molecules with low fluorescence quantum yields, it's especially important for phosphorescence. Quantum yields of phosphorescence are very commonly very, very low because of non-radiative decay of T1 back to S0. However, when we turn that off in matrix isolation, the strength of phosphorescence tends to go through the roof. Because matrix isolated molecules aren't involved in any profound interactions with any sort of solvent and are hardly moving at all, we often see sharp peaks in the UV vis spectra of molecules at very, very low temperatures in matrix isolation, which contrasts with solution phase spectra where we tend to see broad lines due to interactions with solvent, vibrational occupation, so on and so forth. And so, for example, here we have an example spectrum of benzene at 15K isolated in a matrix and the associated calculated oscillator strengths that came from this paper. This resolution of these peaks, for example, different vibrational and even in some cases rotational levels, is absolutely impossible at room temperature and solution, right? Lowering the temperature allows us to see this very fine vibrational structure and make, for example, very confident calculations of the oscillator strengths associated with various transitions. It also often allows us to tease out overlapping transitions. For example, two and three might appear as a single peak in a solution phase spectrum of benzene, while the matrix isolated spectrum shows very clearly that these are separate transitions. So matrix isolation is, is very useful for getting detailed information about single molecule dynamics, uni, unimolecular processes, without having to worry about solvent, occupation of higher energy vibrational levels, and things like this.